Picture this, it's 11 p.m. You're doing the same thing you did all through 2024. Studying since dinner, surrounded by open textbooks, half-finished Anki cards, and three different first aid sections. Yet, somehow you feel like you've accomplished nothing. Sound familiar? I was there too, until I discovered that my biggest enemy wasn't the material, it was my habits. As we head into 2025, I'm sharing the exact changes that took me from struggling to thriving in medical school and how you can make the same transformation in less time than it takes to watch an episode of House. Let's make sure this is the last year you repeat these mistakes. Bad habit number one is false productivity. During finals week, my apartment was the cleanest it's ever been. Not because I suddenly became a neat freak, but because I was avoiding what really mattered. Sometimes known as productive procrastination, these are some of the signs that I look for to see if I'm in my false productivity mode. For example, I'll organize notes instead of actually reviewing them, or I'll create the perfect study schedule instead of actually following it. If we ever find ourselves color coding first aid for the third time, we're not actually studying, we're just hiding. The real problem is, is that this allows us to feel productive while avoiding the thing that's causing us to be anxious in the first place. We're experts at fooling ourselves, making busy work feel like actual real work. So how do you fix it? The first thing is, is that if you actually have to do some sort of prep work, set a timer maybe 10 minutes where you allow yourself to do the work, but you give yourself a very short period of time to do it in. Second, most importantly, ask yourself this phrase, is this moving me toward my goal or am I just moving things around? If you answer it honestly, you will almost always find the real answer. Bad habit number two is procrastination. After millions of years of evolution, our brains are hardwired to treat any threats seriously and that includes our study schedules. In other words, if you find yourself procrastinating, this is not a character flaw. Instead, it's an evolutionary response. Single-celled organisms run from threats. Our brains treat any sort of threat, whether it's psychological or physical, in the same way. So when we run from our step one studying, it's the exact same system at work. Fight or flight doesn't distinguish between physical and academic threats. The solution to this is to make the unconscious conscious, specifically using AVP. This is a technique that I learned from Dr. Becky, where you first acknowledge your feelings, validate them, and then permit yourself to move beyond them. So for example, if I find myself avoiding my studying for the seventh time, first, I would acknowledge the feeling and say something like, okay, I feel really anxious right now. Second, I wanna validate it. I might say something like, you know what? It makes total sense that you feel anxious because the last time you had a practice test, it was not very good. And so, of course, you're gonna feel anxious about that. This is a really important test and you wanna do as well as possible. And finally, I would permit the feeling while also separating the feeling from the action. So I might say something like, you know what? It's totally okay to feel this feeling, but you also can control your action. I still choose to study and get stuff done despite the fact that my body maybe doesn't wanna do that right now. The key isn't fighting your feelings. Instead, it's acknowledging them and then choosing to act anyway. Bad habit number three is digital distractions. The most valuable companies in the world world aren't just selling products, they're exploiting our basic desires. When Sequoia Capital, one of the most famous and successful venture capital funds in the history of the world, evaluates companies, they literally look for the seven deadly sins. They're looking for companies and technologies and websites and apps that literally we cannot live without because they play on our deepest psychological needs and desires. Tech companies will literally employ behavioral scientists to essentially manipulate us. Our phones aren't just devices, they're algorithms designed to hijack our attention monetizing that intention through subtle psychological triggers. One way that I found to overcome this is through social accountability. When someone can see my screen, my Instagram feed suddenly becomes much less interesting. The way that I take advantage of this is, is that I have a study group. And in that study group, people share their webcam and we also share our screens. It's not unlike working in a library or working in a coffee shop where anyone that walks by you can see what it is that you're working on. It doesn't mean that people are just sitting there staring at you, but the fact that I know that someone can see what it is that I'm doing makes it much, much less likely that I'm going to be on the sports page or checking my email or on Netflix. The second thing I found to be very impactful is to just block the internet. There are programs that will block specific websites as well as to block the internet completely from whatever device you're working whether you think you have an internet addiction or not, try blocking the internet on your phone. You will be shocked at how many times you automatically reach for it. 
at least I have been. Apps like Freedom or Self Control can be great for this purpose. Bad habit number four is emotional studying. Everyone says, I don't feel motivated. And of course you don't. Studying sometimes sucks and that's okay. This is especially true if you're not happy with the results of your studying. Like if you have low practice test scores or if you've got low U World scores, you're probably not gonna feel very motivated because every single time you think about it, you also might be thinking about, oh my gosh, like how am I gonna get my scores up? Or you might be thinking about that bad block. The real solution is twofold. One is, is that you wanna allow yourself to see better results. And so one of the ways of doing that is to set smaller goals for yourself in the beginning. So for example, instead of trying to do a mixed block of 40 questions on every single subject, maybe just focus on one subject so that you can see yourself improve on that subject. Seeing yourself improve can help you improve your motivation and allow you to gradually build up towards doing mixed blocks your feelings, stick with the plan. Commitment trumps motivation. In the beginning, you're not gonna feel like working and that's okay. Make a commitment to yourself to actually study every single day and then follow through on the commitment don't just worry about the motivation. So build up your competence to get the right results to build that motivation. Bad habit number five is all or nothing, the perfect day trap. We all remember that one perfect study day and we've all ruined countless other days trying to recreate it. I remember there were days that I had at Sanford in medical school where I was just on, like, like I would wake up early, I would have a ton of energy and I would immediately jump into work and like the entire day was just productive. The problem was is that I would let one bad morning snowball into a wasted day. I would say something like, well, I didn't really have a good morning, so you know, it'll, it'll be okay. Like, and I would just keep procrastinating or doing whatever. And then I would just let it snowball. And then I would say something like, Ah, uh, it's okay. I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll just do better tomorrow. Remember, the hardest part isn't doing the work, it's starting the work. The key is to have no zero days. Even on your worst possible day, make sure that there are no days where you get no work done. So if you've literally done nothing and it's 11 o'clock, just tell yourself, I'm gonna do one question or I'm gonna do one flashcard. The other main benefit of this is, is that if you do just one thing, you'll find that you probably won't stop at just one thing. Doing one flashcard is probably going to lead to more and that's a good thing, just embrace it, right? But the key is, is that you need to start. Bad habit number six is passive learning. Some of the least effective study techniques are the most popular ones and they all share one fatal flaw they are passive. One of my favorite research articles ever was where they looked at what learning techniques were the best, which were the least effective. Anytime you hear about a research study saying that like this study technique works, oftentimes they're comparing it to a placebo of some kind. But remember, we're not trying to be better than nothing. Instead, we're trying to be the best. And the research is clear about what works the best. Highlighting, rereading, and summarizing, those were all rated as low utility techniques. If you look at this entire list, you'll find that the more passive the technique, the less effective it is. It's really that simple. The things that are comfortable aren't necessarily best for learning. Instead, the solution is to be more active, right? So take more practice tests, use distributed practice, which really is just saying do your Anki cards every day. The techniques that feel hard, that's your brain actually learning. It's like going to the gym. The techniques that feel the hardest are actually your brain learning. Bad habit number seven is comparison. Just like procrastination, this isn't a bad habit. It's likely written into our evolutionary code. Even lobsters get a serotonin boost when they win at something. I saw a list of some of the deepest biological needs that humans have. The need to win and compete was also on this list, along with survival, eating, comfort, sex, taking care of loved ones. Comparison isn't a modern problem. It's an ancient survival instinct that's gone wrong. Now note that all comparison isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? If you see someone succeeding, don't envy them. Try to reverse engineer what it is that they're doing. If you see someone that's successful and you say like, okay, let me figure out exactly what it is that they're doing and use that as a roadmap for success, then there are positives that you can take away from it. The destructive way to compare and the one that we need to get rid of is when it feeds our feelings of inadequacy. Many of us struggle with negative self-beliefs. And so when we compare compare ourselves to others and find ourselves continuously falling short, this can paralyze our progress. Bad habit number eight is perfectionism. The most perfectionistic people often struggle the most with procrastination and self-esteem. It's not a coincidence. In my experience, perfectionism isn't about high standards. It's about feeling not good enough with yourself or with what it is that you're doing. This creates oftentimes a very vicious cycle. So for example, whenever I feel like I need to be perfect at something or I need to write the perfect thing or I need to have the perfect test score, then I almost inevitably will procrastinate 
procrastinate. Because again, this is a psychological threat that my body is going to want to get away from. However, because I'm procrastinating, it also is setting me up for poor results, which again is going to lead me to more perfectionism since it also reinforces the negative ideas I might have about myself. To break free, the goal isn't to lower your standards. Instead, it's to raise your self-worth. One of the most valuable things that I did for myself was to do EMDR therapy, which stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprogramming. This allowed me to see that so many of the negative beliefs that I had about myself actually came from experiences that I'd had early in life oftentimes very early in childhood. What EMDR does is it allows you to go back and reprocess those experiences so that they don't leave quite the psychic baggage. For example, let's say that someone gave a presentation when they were, I don't know, like in third grade. The entire class laughed at them. The teacher said, wow, you're so stupid. That was horrible. I've never seen such a bad presentation. And then they started crying in front of the class. That's a horrible experience. It's also the kind of thing that is going to leave a mark so that every single time that person has a presentation that they have to do, that trauma is going to follow them. Even if they're not thinking about that moment every single time, the experience is going to linger and it's going to affect every single presentation they have thereafter. What EMDR allows you to do is to go back and reprocess those experiences so that anything related to those don't carry the same emotional weight. The therapy honestly changed my life. And if you have any sort of experiences, and especially if you can name the specific experiences that are leading to certain feelings, I highly recommend it. Bad habit number nine is re resource hoarding. Whatever resources you're using, I guarantee thousands of people are using the exact same resources. Some of them are going to fail and some of them are going to excel. The resources aren't the difference. The real problem is, is that resources are an example of what. What is not as important as how. So one of the things that happens when we have bad results is, is that we start to believe negative things about ourselves. And if we start to think like, okay, well, maybe I'm just not good enough, then it's easy to think that, oh, okay, the solution is gonna be something external to me. That person's successful, they're using this book, like I wanna use that book too, because that must be the reason that they're successful. What this misses is the power of the approach. Instead of thinking you're one reason resource away from success, remember you're actually just one approach change away from success. This is the real game changer. The proof is actually pretty straightforward. I have worked with people. One of them had failed step one four times on their own. However, they changed their approach but kept pretty much everything the same, right? It was the same person. They went to a Caribbean medical school. They didn't have very good grades. They were not like an amazing test taker. They were also using virtually the exact same resources they were when they failed four times. However, what they changed was their approach. They used a lot of the same habits that I talked about here, um, as well as made sure that everything they learned, they learned really, really well, and they didn't memorize it. They also made sure that they used space repetition really, really well, and they never forgot those things. And then they learned how to read questions. They scored a 277 on their practice test before they retook step one and ultimately passed. So the next time you find yourself sort of reaching for a new resource, ask yourself, okay, am I doing this because I don't believe in myself? If I don't believe in myself, maybe the problem is, is that I just need to have a better approach. Don't let these habits follow you into 2025. And if you wanna see how to actually turn these better habits into a 270 plus score, check out my next video, how to score 270 plus by mastering step one versus step two differences.